All right. Hello, everybody. Alrighty, well, welcome to that, my live stream, Daddy Duck 365 in the blind. Uh, as always, sponsored by Salt Creek Custom Ammo and Comp and Choke. Listen, if y'all looking for some great ammo, uh, duck hunting, goose hunting, swan hunting, turkey hunting, check out Salt Creek Custom Ammo. Uh, they will customize any any shotgun shell to what you may need. Uh, you know, for whatever you need. Also, comp and choke. Listen, I have switched over to comp and choke, and I'm telling you now, it has been my the best decision I've made in a long time as far as coming going to shoot guns because I comp and choke the tubes are unbelievable. Um, the patterns are great. I have yet to find a shell that it does not uh, pattern well in my comp and choke tubes. Anyway, there we go. Uh, welcome to the guys who just came in. If you're in here, leave me a message. Put it in a comment. Tell me who you are, where you're from, that kind of thing. And let's get this party started. Um, <clears throat> whew, what a week, man. What a week. Um, let's see here. Who all's in here, man? Come on. Chat it up. Let's get something started in here. Uh, hopefully, uh, if you are in here and you follow my channel, hopefully you saw the video I did on the... <laughs> Hi, my name is Chris, and I'm from Arkansas, but now I live in Oklahoma. Hey, hey, you want to come up here, Chris? You want to come up in, in here with me? If you do, just let me know. Carters, what's going on? Um, uh, hopefully y'all saw the video that I posted on the uh, National Forest Service and they're burning. Lee Louder, man, I am glad you are here, dude. Um, are you home or no? But anyway, he's talking about y'all really, if you haven't seen it, please go see that video. Um, you're not home. Okay. I got you, buddy. Carter says yes and shared it out. Um, hopefully those of you in here that saw it liked it. Um, it took me a while to put this together, believe it or not. Um, most of the burnt, well, matter of fact, 100% of what the videos that you saw came from um, the Francis Marion National Forest down in the low country of South Carolina. Um, and I had to go through a, a couple of people to get those video, that video and to get the pictures. But once I got it and we went through, oh, two or three days of me trying to video the narrative. And believe it or not, it took a long time uh, to get it right, to get my voice inflections right, and then to find the music. Oh, my gosh. Um, you, I, if you've never created a video trying to get music to actually match up when you want it to is, at least for me, it's, it's one of the hardest. That's why I, I don't use a lot of music because trying to get it to um, match up. But anyway, Carter, thank you so much for sharing it out, brother. Um, I really do appreciate it. 
And, you know, yes, I do want the views. Yes, I want my name out there. Of course I do. I mean, who, when you come in and do these things, you know, you're doing them because you want the attention. You know, of course, everybody does. They want some sort of attention out of it. Of course. I mean, that's just human nature. But it's also trying to get people to realize what's going on. And even though this is a duck hunting channel, um, I'm also a conservationist. And... And I believe in conservation. So, it's so time consuming. I got three GoPros and haven't used them in probably two years because of it. I, yeah, dude, it is, it's crazy, man. Um, I, I, I worked, I mean, I was working on this for a solid week. I mean, really a solid week trying to get this right. And, um, you know, a lot of videos, that, you know, it's like product reviews and stuff like that. I can usually bust them out pretty simple and pretty quick. Um, but something like this where you're trying to get the words right. So when certain types of people listen to it, they don't think you're some dumb country hick, you know. <laughs> Even though you might be, yeah, uh, they, you know, you don't want to come off like that. Um, I mean, I even went and got a haircut, a beard trim, and I found a collared shirt to wear, and I got another hat. I wasn't wearing this one; I was wearing another one. Oh man! But anyway, um, I want to thank each and every one of you right now. Uh, the channel has hit 2,400. Um, we are growing and we're continuously growing. I get, you know, three, four a week, which is great. Um, I do want to do a giveaway though, but I, I'm, I'm waiting for that 3,000 marks. So I got 600 more to go and hopefully we can do a giveaway. All right. Ooh, where'd, where'd I go? Where'd I go? Where'd I go? Technology really good. Yeah, it really is. All right, Chris, I just dropped a link in the in the chat. This is for Chris and Chris alone, right as of right now. So, Chris, you just hit that, and once you hit that, follow the prompts, and I'll get you up here. Um, yeah, TikTok is really easy, dude. I, it is so simple. But super short video. You can do a 10-minute video on TikTok. Um, but it is it is kind of rough. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, we have Chris is fixing to come up in the house. He is the one. He is the only. Um, he is a... Um, I don't even know what he is. He's just somebody. Anyway. Yeah, I'm just. <laughs> What's going on, doing? brother? Oh, man. Another day. Another Monday. I hear you. I hear you, buddy. So, but yeah. Your video, I loved it. I showed it to some friends at work that are outdoorsmen, hunters, fishers, hunter, hunters, fishermen, hikers whatever and they thought it was a a, a crying shame it is, and this is not just in south carolina this is all over the country um i told you in the last three weeks they've been burning all around me yeah, yeah. I had, homegrown says homegrown says he's just somebody <laughs> <laughs> i am there ain't nothing special about me no uh. Oh my goodness. But yeah, dude, I mean, this, I started digging into it and 
and I found um, two articles from USA Today and from uh, the New York. Was it? Is it the Times or the Post? Oh, you left. No, I'm here. Okay. No what? Nope. You disconnected. You're back. Quit pushing buttons. Stringyard um, told me to do something, so I did it. So I found two articles where New Mexico had the largest wildfire ever back in 2022, I believe it was. And it was over 5,000 acres. And it was started by US, the U.S. Forest Service, mm -hmm. is what the article says. But, you know, and I'm like, man, you know, and they're burning today. They, they are they are now burning right now at the Francis Marion National Forest here in South Carolina. I mean, they're, they're, they're not going to stop. They're not going to stop. Um, I mean, y'all can go over to their website and y'all can tell them. I mean, not their website, but they have a Facebook page. And you can go over there and post your concerns or whatever. And if you want to share it out, share that video I did. I don't care. Uh, what are they going to do? Shave my head and send me to the desert? I've been there, you know. Um, and if they, if they delete your post, let me know because we have somebody in the, in the wings right now, um, that will take that first amendment case to court. I kid you not, but, um, the CWS, which is the uh, Carolina Wildlife Syndicate, if nobody here is a member of that, it's a Facebook page. You go in there, you answer a few questions, and you can, you know, they'll 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 put you on. Um, it's it's the largest that I have seen uh, as a Facebook group for conservationists, and and that's everything, not just ducks, not just turkeys, not just deer and coyotes and land management. Um, yeah. Homegrown says uh, CWS is a great page. Um, they're, you know, they listen, prescribed fire is a necessity. I, I will not never deny that because you need prescribed fire. What I'm saying is why are they doing it during peak uh, when deer are dropping fawns right now, especially in my area, it may not be in your area. You may, you know, some people may live in the Northwest where they haven't started yet, but turkeys are laying eggs. Squirrels are having babies. Rabbits are having babies. Possums, raccoons, everything's having babies right now. Reptiles are coming, coming out. You know, your turtles are out. Your snakes are out. They can't escape this stuff. And, um, Who's going to look after the wildlife if it's not for us? Yeah, you know, we're the biggest. I mean, hunters and fishermen and trappers are the biggest conservation people in the in the world, or especially in the United States. You know, so anyway, that's my two cents. But Charles Holden, what's going on, guys? If you don't, I have Chris. Um, he's on TikTok. Uh, you do have a YouTube page, I believe. Just started. Just started. And Instagram. Yes. Um, is it still OARC Outdoors? No, no, that went away. It's just okay. Chris underscore capital S. Type that in, though. Can you can you hit chat? Can you type chat? or? Mm, I, don't, I don't think I can. Okay. No, it won't let me. What is Spell it out. Uh, Chris and then underscore capital Wait S. I got to find the underscore. Underscore what? Capital S. Uh-huh. That's it. At. That's. So it's, is it capital C for Chris? Yes. That That's. What I go by on there, I don't know if TikTok has it set up as something else or something different. I don't pay attention. He's walking. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, 
he's got some he's got some stuff on TikTok and Instagram and and a few things on YouTube. So, but so, uh, did I hear you say you needed six hundred more people to get to a thousand? I need I need six hundred to get to three thousand. Oh, get to three thousand. Yeah, uh, on here on YouTube. Okay, I'll make and that. When I do that, and when I do that, I'm gonna have a pretty good giveaway. So, can I add to your giveaway? Not yet. Okay. And well, there he goes again. It wasn't I'm back. You're there. All right. I uh, and the reason I don't, I won't say what it is, is because some people will just subscribe just for it and right. wait and then unsubscribe when they get, yeah. you know, whatever. So I'll holler at you later. And if you want me to, I'll, I'll throw something in on it. I ain't got okay. it. Um, but yeah, I've got, I've got plans for something, something big. So something, something big. Working on it, but you know, six hundred could take another year. <laughs> and it's funny you start talking about giveaways and free stuff. Oh, they'll come out of the woodwork. I'm telling you, you know, you just mentioned I had a TikTok and I did that giveaway. When did I do that giveaway last year? And uh, man, people, I mean, left and right. And then everybody started getting greedy. Hey, when are you going to do another giveaway? I'm like, yeah. Dude. I'll... <laughs> Guys, come on. Yeah, I know. Because <laughs> we buy this stuff ourselves. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean. It's, it's not like I'm getting donated or, or I got this huge group of promoter, uh, not, uh, of of uh, sponsors that are going to send me stuff, you know? Exactly. Uh, hey. I told him, I said, hey, I'll do another giveaway, but nothing's free. And what I want. And nobody, I didn't even come close to meeting that goal. Yeah. All right, were you still going to do the giveaway? Did I get what I wanted out of it? No. And not trying to be a jerk, but I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, walking the saying, if you pay to do a Facebook ad and Instagram ad campaign in South Carolina, could probably get a bunch of followers you know walking you're right and it would probably in the long run maybe help but uh i've been doing youtube now for four years yeah that's right don't forget the thumbs up y'all uh i've been doing youtube now for four years and i don't know how many of y'all know this but if your channel does not make an, a certain amount of money at the end of three years, you cannot take it off on your taxes. And I can honestly say that for three years, I was spending anywhere from eight to nine grand a year on my channel. Mm. And I didn't even come close didn't even come close so paying for something right now is going to be it, it it ain't in the budget it, it just ain't in the budget you know um you know as as hunters we got to buy a few things every year anyway like ammo and um luckily if all works out. I won't have to buy any waiters this year. I really don't need any decoys. I'd like to have some more, but I don't need any more. Um, that's, and I want to take a couple of trips out of state. So um, there's my budget right there. You mm -hmm. know, uh, I am taking a trip to, I am taking a trip to Louisiana and um, in September. And then, uh, you know, of course, my going back and forth to North Carolina uh, will be, I'm not going to go as much as I did the last couple of years um, because, because of the budget this year. I mean, I just, I got to be realistic about it. 
uh, Walken, I hope you understand. I mean, your idea is great. You're correct. You know, it, it takes money to make money. I got all of that. I understand all of that. But I also found out yesterday, um, I got to buy a new lawnmower. Ooh. And my rider is, uh, for y'all of those that have a riding lawnmower, you know that there's a engagement cable, right? Mm -hmm. And I have broke four of them in a month. I don't know what's going on. I know they're put on correctly. Um, I don't have no idea what's happening, but every time, you know, I put the last one I put on worked for one cutting, got the yard cut. I went to go cut it again yesterday. And as soon as I engaged, the cable broke. Um, granted, the lawnmower is 15, 15 years old. But I'm going to be spending at least three grand on a new lawnmower. Minimum. <laughs> um, but I tell you how, I tell you what helps me walking is your word. You're you telling people, um, you're watching my videos, commenting on my videos. And of course, they don't cost you nothing. But, but if you, if you have, and this is for any of your favorite YouTubers or favorite TikTokers or Instagram guys, um, if you comment or if you give it a thumbs up and, and comment, that helps the algorithm, which pushes our videos more. Um, because I will comment back to you. Now there is one video that I did. Uh, about my dad, I have not made any comments. And the reason is, is I'm seeing how many I can get because I'm going to be doing another video on him, hopefully Friday. And I'll have those comments for a question and answer kind of thing. Chris, I know you've commented a couple times on it and that's what I'm doing. I'm waiting because I'm going to have my dad. He's going to answer these questions. Um, some are silly. Some are legit, and some are flat out silly. Um, there's one in there that's absolutely hilarious. I'll have to say, Chris wrote it. If you want to go watch the video and then read the comments, you'll see it. Um, <laughs> but um, so, uh, but that helps me. And then, you know, if you see a video that you really like, uh, share it out on your on your um, social media. Uh, where does Chris hunt? Uh, Chris, he's at a uh, walking wild is asking, where does Chris hunt? I showed up late. Does Chris have any hunting trips planned this year? I have quite a few planned, but, uh, um, so I, I don't know who you said, ask that question. Uh, walking while walking while uh, walking i'm from arkansas born and raised i now live 20 minutes across the state line in oklahoma i hunt both public and private um i have a great public land spot 20 minutes south of me and another one 20 30 minutes north of me i hunt in northeast arkansas south arkansas uh i get around the louisiana texas border a lot uh cattle lake or I have in the last couple of years, but usually Caddo Lake. Um, <clears throat> just anywhere I can find a spot. Uh, I don't have a boat anymore. I do a lot of walking hunting. So that means I carry everything in and I carry everything out. So that greatly limits me. Um, but in all actuality, it, it, it helps me. When people are off on this side of the water, and all you hear is boom, boom, pow, pow, boom, boom. And the ducks don't hear nothing over here except for a few quacks and nothing else. Well, they all come over to me and a little motion in the decoys and I've got ducks down. But I hunt a little bit of everywhere. <clears throat> my one trip, if I'm able to do it, my big trip is, can I use your real name on here? Yeah. Okay. Is with Matt 
Um, I'm hoping to get on a swan hunt this year. Uh, fingers crossed. Fingers pr- crossed. Fingers crossed and praying. But um, other than that, I'm going to go down to Felsenthal in South Arkansas. Hunt with my good buddy Bryce, and I'll probably go back up to Northeast Arkansas. Hunt with my good buddy Jimbo Fields, and here and there, I'm, it's kind of like Matt said. I mean, everybody wants you to go hunt with them or meet you halfway to hunt, but you know, I still have bills to pay and a family to help support. And yep. So, um, yeah, walking. I was I was actually going to say it if if he didn't. Um, we are. I'm putting in for another swan permit this year. I got my swan last year in North Carolina. Uh, we are um, we are going to put in for a party hunt. I've got a couple other guys that are going to join, going to put in it with me. I think we can put in. I think there's. I think you can do it. Four people. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, so I'm gonna get them all together, and we're gonna go under a party permit that means if one of us gets it all four of us get it and i've already got the outfitter who i will use uh poor boy out uh, outfitter and um we will hunt with them uh hopefully uh if not if if i don't if, if for some reason and we've talked about this kind of in the you know wins if neither of us get it, we still may get up together this year and just hunt somewhere. So it's yeah. kind of in the wind, but you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, let me catch up with some things real quick. Uh, yep. Dan Calder. Hey Dan, how you doing? Glad you're here. Those trips out of state will put a dent in the pocket for sure. Two to four K easy. If not more, depending on how far away you go and what you are targeting. You have got that right, man. I, it, it's expensive. Um, and I've got, you know, I got friends all over and I, I keep getting invited every year. Um, I was sticking kind of close to home, um, especially last year because I got a new pup and Bougie, will, she's over a year now. Uh, she's coming along really good and, and hopefully I can carry her on some of those out-of-state hunts more with other people. She'll be a little bit more seasoned. Um, Swamp Rat, Florida. What's up, guy? Glad you can make it. Uh, yep, a North Carolina swan hunt would be awesome. 10 4, good luck with it this year. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, I know I'm going to Louisiana this year in September. Um, I'm actually going to hunt with my dad, aka Papa Duck. Um, I don't mean to sound morbid, <laughs> but if he he's getting up in age, hopefully he'll, he'll be able to. He'll still be around, but this will probably be his last year hunting and, or his last duck hunt. This will, this will probably be his last duck hunt. So, um, we're headed down to Venice and Louisiana and, um, hopefully, hopefully get on some teal. If not, we'll catch a fish or two. If nothing else, I'm going to eat some crawfish like they're going out of style. I'm just going to, I'm just going to sit at a buffet and just eat until I, get fatter but um maybe oh yeah but uh um i do have i'm trying to i'm trying to get with a friend of mine to hunt in arkansas up where bryce and them hunt um up in northeast arkansas um another 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 subscriber of mine has been asking me so um and he asked me last year to go and i was kind of like well I'd love to go, but I got this new pup and I don't want to leave her home for a week. I mean, that's just, you know, that's not good. So, you know, in all honesty, and I know you're the same way because we talk, I mean, a lot on the phone and everything. If I could find a camera crew and a couple of sponsors, I could travel half of this duck hunting with all the invites I get every year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Was- epic footage one way or the other yeah i, I mean well <clears throat> and you'll know who i'm talking about when i say the states wisconsin north dakota minnesota missouri yeah. Kansas. i mean i i get invited to minnesota 
You know, I get, I get, I get, I got a guy right now who, and will hunt. All I gotta do is get there, but that's a, that's literally a 23 hour drive. Mm. (laughs) You know, I could fly it, but I couldn't carry what I wanted to carry, Mm. you know, because of restrict, you know, air airline restrictions and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm the same way, dude. If, if I could get a camera, one camera guy, and had enough sponsors i could travel yeah i'm talking about you after five welcome in cody i'm glad you could make it if you want to come up cody you're more than welcome just let me know um chris this is after five outdoors uh cody um he has got a great channel but he's a little burned out right now on youtube but uh I want to hunt with him. I want to hunt with him. He's come down here to hunt with me. Had to stop in quick. I got you. Uh, he came down here and hunted with me, and we shot two mergansers. And I ran him into a tree and almost killed him with uh, food poisoning. But, you know, it is what it is. Where, where's Cody out of? Uh, Minnesota. Oh, okay. He's the guy you just talked about then. Yeah. Minnesota. Minnesota. But, um, yeah, I'm the same way, dude. If I could get a camera guy and – because I miss so much. I mean, you really do. You, you miss mm-hmm. some funny stuff. If you don't have a camera on on you at all times, you miss some funny, funny stuff. The, and um, the road trips are the best part. They really are. I mean – Oh, yeah. Yeah, as adults, there might be a little beep, yeah. beep tensor in there. But it's – it's, it's hilarious. So, as you know, uh, back in January, I took my daughter, which this was her first year for duck hunting. I took her up to Jimbo's with me. If we would have had a camera, I would have 20,000 followers on every one of my social medias. She was cracking me up, asking questions. Oh, yeah. It, it, it was great. It was fun. I was like, man, why do I? You can't drive down the road doing a, a live because they censor you for unsafe habits. Right. Lee, why can't I just have this right now at this moment? Uh, hey, Cecilia, how you doing? Uh, uh, this is Raven Cat Homestead, Cecilia. She's out of Canada and she's saying hi to you, Chris. I don't know if you can read the comments or not. So, and that's what I was trying to do a while ago. I thought it was going to let me in the comments, and it won't. I can't see okay. nothing. Um, yeah, I'm getting some. Uh, I'm getting some OG people in here tonight, buddy. What's up? I got some OGs. I got yeah. After fives in here. Cecilia's in here. I got some OGs, man. If it matter, um, me a question. Feel free. I know it's Matt's live, but I mean. Hey, listen. Yeah, no, it's we 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 talk about anything, man. So, um, my question for you is about my favorite my favorite dog. Has she got over her little temper tantrum? <laughs> she got over it today. Oh, all right. Let me let me back up. Oh yeah. So we got off at five o'clock. I got off work at five o'clock, and I had a few things to do, and about six or so. I took her outside. I was going to throw some, just throw some dummies in the yard, you know, and she's happy. And, um, own Ger- Ger- Geritol. Yeah, that's right. OG stands for own Geritol. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, so I took her out. We're throwing, we're, I'm doing what I call hup ups. You know, I just start swinging around, hup, up, 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 and throw it and let her just burn some energy. Um, Threw a couple into some bushes, and she loves those bushes because if I land it on top, she gets to jump into the bush to get it. And so she has a good time with it. And um, so I said, hmm, she's she's over this. She's over this little temper thing she was doing. So I brought out the, the um, little dog blind, mm-hmm. and, I, and I threw one, and she went straight out and got it. Went straight into the dog blind, turned around, laid down, and handed me the bumper. She did it four times. 
on the fifth, on the fifth, I send her and she walks out. And she, I, if you've ever seen Bougie walk, she's got a little hip sway and she just sashays all the way to the bumper, turns around, picks it up, turns around and sashays all the way back. I'm trying to coax her in and she just looks at me, goes into the, into the dog line, turns around and lays down. <laughs> I'm like, well, we're done for the day. Uh, uh, did I tell you I'm getting a dog? I heard that the other night. Yeah. I heard that the other night that you, um, I can't remember who you're getting it from or what you, I knew you were getting a lab, but yes. I didn't know what color or sex or who you're getting it from. A uh, female, I'm getting it from Gary uh, of Gun Dog Mafia. That okay. Um, or I guess now it's going to be Sported Dog Mafia because of copyright, something or another. But I guess you'd call it a red lab. She's yellow with a reddish tint, like most of them are. Uh, she'll be ready to go sometime mid June. Can you see that? Saw some pintails. Man, I'm gonna have to get my reading glasses. Saw some pin up shovelers. Day more than yesterday. Lost his mouth. Well, good lord, man. Yeah, he called me up the other day and says, I got pin tails. <laughs> you know, lord. this year we saw I didn't get one this year, but I saw a lot of pin tails. The one dog or the one dog, the one duck that I didn't see this year that I usually see plenty of in Oklahoma. Is gadwalls. Hmm. I didn't see one gadwall this year. And season, well, not this past season, but season before, I couldn't leave without having two or three in my mixed bag limit. It, it, they were everywhere. Right. Um, so see is just watch out for their stomachs they are known to have issues at a lab yeah they have a they have an issue of their stomachs turning yeah uh i've never had one and i've owned bougie is my first non-lab and i've never had a problem with a lab stomach turning but um i also kind of was finicky on what i gave them to eat yes so they wouldn't because a lab will just They'll eat, they'll eat a whole bag down if you don't watch them. Yes. Yeah, this will be my fourth. Yeah, my fourth lab. So Yeah. And what color did you say it was? That yellowish red color. The okay. Color, what, I don't, it's technically a yellow lab, but it has a reddish tint to it. The, the red tint to it. Yeah, uh, I'm posting these up so you, so you kind of get kind of can stay in some of the chat. Two hours rest before. Yes, you're. At, is that that? Is that Cody? That's Cody. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's kind of like a human going to swim, and you want their food to settle and be ready before they do any kind of activity. I'll let them snack when I'm when we're hunting. Yes. I'll 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 bring I'll actually bring dog snacks for them. Uh occasionally they'll get some of my apple pie or a piece of biscuit or something later, but you know, so it's you, just because you can't help yourself. I mean you got this sad eyed looking thing that you know, I don't know how dogs do it. You could have the fattest dog in the world and when you're eating their they their body shrivels up and their faces shrivel up and they you look so pitiful. I used but, to give, uh, well, my three lives before, I used to give them deer jerky or deer sticks. Nothing but pro, pure protein when yep. I was out, out on the water or in flooded timber or whatever. But I got some little biscuits that, um, little dog biscuits and treats. Hey, Jeff, how you doing? Um, you know, I, I usually feed them that during the during a hunt. You know, give them give them one or two every now and then, just to help keep some energy going, especially on those cold days. Yes, but um, I won't feed before going, but when they get back, 
if the feed bucket comes out, I mean, I, I, I give them what they need. And I let my dogs run for 20 minutes, just burn off some energy before we're, it's go time. I get out oh, yeah. there enough that they have a good 20, 30 minutes. They can run off energy and we still have time to go set up decoys and wait till first shooting light. Right. I do that if, if, if unless I have a busy ramp, uh, it's the only time I won't do it. Mm -hmm. um, I'll keep her close, but I'll let her, I'll let her run. I'll let her run this year, you know, just let her run around, burn off. But she has a habit of finding dead fish. That dog can find a dead fish six miles away. <laughs> so, and she'll bring it to me all happy and she's rolled in it. And oh, God. Yep. Yeah. And Bougie has stick. Oh, just been sick. <laughs> He's had the uh, the sheets. Oh, mm -hmm. man, I'm sorry to hear that, Jeff. I hope you feel better. Yeah, buddy. Text uh, him. Do, 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 do. Uh oh. So I hang on. Go ahead and speak. I, I need to answer this. Oh yeah, go ahead. Um, shoot, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, um, so yesterday afternoon, I got quite a surprise when I opened up my stand-up freezer and learned it's been off for a few days. Oh Lord. Yeah. So there was about five hundred dollars worth of venison and. Hundred dollars worth of steer out the door. And, RD, uh, what's going on? Luckily, my daughter's first green wing teal. I moved it to the deep freeze a few weeks ago, so I still got that to go get married. Right. Yeah, I have I have two uh, chest freezers in my garage, and I don't think. I never miss a day. I'll go out there and check them every day. I go look down and make sure the lights are turned on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I've got, I've, I've got to say, I've, I mean, I've got one deep freezer is nothing but steaks and pork chops and chicken and all that stuff. And, and then I got mm -hmm. one that has nothing but game in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, and I got a, <laughs> I got a generator standing by right beside it. Yeah, All I gotta do is plug them up. Yeah, these uh, RD, what's going on? It just went. Uh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say it just went kaput. It wasn't. It's Ooh. over. Ouch. Uh, Lee Louder says now. Lee Lee is a duck hunting buddy of mine. We've hunted together. Um, and he goes, I believe she creates those dead fish. <laughs> <laughs> she does, man. I mean, she might. Oh, she might be a better fishing dog than a hunting dog. Oh, I'm telling you, she she'll find a dead fish, man. I'm surprised she's not beating down the door right now. She's in there with her mama. Oh, um, yeah, buddy. Yeah, you know. Uh. How is it? Uh, she's doing good. She's in there watching some kind of crime show. Uh, yeah, Probably so trying to figure out how to do me in. You know, <laughs> my wife without getting <laughs> do what? My wife's a nurse. She already can do it and get away with it. Yeah. So, so C is saying you should can your meat just in case you lose power. Great for long time long term use. Uh, yeah. and not get caught doing it. That's right. That's right. Uh, oh, man. So have you uh, taken the browning back out after it's an first initial? Yes. This All right. So uh, for those that don't know, um, well, I think everybody knows that I brought, bought a new Sweet 16 last year. Used it all season. And why this happened after the season is beyond me. But I was going to the range testing uh, different loads.
from Salt Creek Custom Ammo and choke tubes from uh, Comp and Choke. And my gun started, um, it wouldn't cycle the second round. So it would shoot one and it would either stovepipe, um, it either stovepipe out or it would just, the bolt would lock to the rear and nothing would happen. Um, so I took it into the shop and I, first of all, I cleaned it. Um, I, I cleaned it as, as I was missing one tool and that was a, a pin punch, a uh, roll pin. I didn't have a roll pin punch, uh, that would fit, uh, for the, for the, um, uh, doggone it, the spring, uh, the, the, the inertia spring, the inertia spring. Inertia. So I took it up and, uh, took it up to the gun shop and, told him what was going on and we took it apart right then and there. And we checked the inertia system, the spring. I'm not saying it was clean, but it was, it wasn't filthy. Mm -hmm. uh, we took out the, uh, the shell stop, you know, where the magazine shell stop, a uh, little button, took that out, checked it all out. Uh, the ejector seemed to be working and then the gunsmith mentioned to me, he says, yeah, man, this is like the second Browning Sweet 16 of the new Sweet 16s that we have gotten in the shop because it will either won't eject or it won't even shoot. And I said, well, what's going on with it? He says, the, this guy, and he showed me the gun. The gun was right there. The firing pin was bent on his gun and it did not have a firing pin spring. So they took my bolt apart and sure enough, I did not have a firing pin spring in mine. So that's two guns in the same shop that had the same issue, two separate guns, less than a year old, each one of them that were, had the same issue. Were they both sweet? Both of them were sweet 16s. Mine was the Wicked Wings, and the other guy was the the nice one, you know, the fancy steel and, and wood. Hmm. Both of them. And um, so they replaced the firing pin spring. My firing pin was okay. They said it was fine. They replaced the spring. Um, he actually test fired it with about a half a box of shells. It shot great for him. I took it last Friday to the range. And I shot six rounds through it. And I'm going to tell you now, it not only did it fire all six, it seemed to me that it actually shot faster and the trigger pull wasn't as hard as it was before. And I know they didn't do any, uh, I know they didn't do any trigger work to it. Right. Ouch. I'm gonna let you read this real quick while you're while I'm sitting there talking. Uh -huh. Um, but um, yeah, that yeah. So I've shot it. It it it's shooting fine now. Hey. Um, mm. it's Ain't just fine. a, it's just a, you know, it's it's just kind of disheartening that Browning, a name brand shotgun, <clears throat> and I heard. Well, actually, I saw this on one of the Facebook pages I go to. Another guy had a Browning, and I don't know if it was a Maximum, Maxis, or if it was the A5, but he bought a brand new gun, right? Brand new. Um, he told him to leave it in the box because he was going to put it together when he got home. So, you know, he didn't want to have it put together because he... He had already shouldered one and done all that stuff, so he knew what he was getting. So he takes it home, puts it together, goes to the goes out in the backyard to go shoot it, and it wouldn't fire. Hmm. So he takes it back and said, I can't get this thing to fire. And the guy goes, What do you mean it's brand new? You just bought it today. He said, It will not fire. <coughs> 
and they took it apart right then and there. And they pulled the trigger trigger group out, and it did not have a hammer spring on it. Goodness. A hammer spring. It, it sounds like Brownie needs to work on their quality. And I'm not knocking them by any means. Well, but believe it or not, that's exactly what Cody just said. All right, Cody. Great minds, buddy. Great minds. Um, I'll be right back, Matt. Just yep. Get your glasses. I am. All right. <clears throat> so, anyway. <laughs> Charles, your wife and mother-in-law have butter beans stored in the freezer dating back to 2004. I won't eat them. And I want to pull a plug. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh, I think we pulled our last our last bag of butter beans out of the freezer the other day. Uh, them things were so good. Oh my goodness. Uh, they were so good. But yeah, I mean I cannot um I just can't believe that. I've, I've, I know of two guns uh, personally and then I've heard about the other one. And I just, that's just crazy to me um, about Browning. And, and I love Browning. I mean, I really do like Browning guns. I mean, I got a Belgian Browning Sweet 16. You know, I got a Browning Silver. I've got a side-by-side. All right, Cody, you take care of yourself, man. Thanks for stopping in. Don't forget to hit that uh, thumbs up button or the thumbs down. I don't care which one you hit. Just hit one of them. You get recognition uh, either way. Exactly. Yeah, I had somebody ask me, man, do you ever get thumbs down? I said, oh, yeah, of course I do. Well, how does that make you feel? I said, man, it's engagement. I don't care how you get it. Yeah, uh, it all helps. Um, I had a guy. I had a guy that that posted uh, about a video I did here recently, and he did not like that product, and he let everybody and a brother know. And I just said, "Yep, yeah, sounds like you're upset about it, but thanks for watching." <laughs> I, what you, I'm not going to get into an argument with you. Everybody's got their own opinions. Uh, RD says my Maximus had uh, two trips back to Browning. Uh, hey, Randy, what's going on? Appreciate you stopping by, buddy. Uh, I'm with I'm with you all. I'm just in the background tonight. Not a problem, Jeff. I got you, buddy. You're not feeling well, but I appreciate you being here. Yeah, I wish, you know, getting back to duck hunting trips, like, like you were saying earlier, if I had a crew, or and not even a I mean, just maybe two other people, you mm -hmm. know, somebody to run a camera, somebody to hunt with. Uh, so there'd be a little something going on there. And, and a, a handful of good sponsors, dude, I've got people all over the United States that want me to come hunt with them. And I would do it. I would just go. And I would like to keep it fair. Give me two guys that know that actually know how to run a camera. One can film this hunt, and the other one can hunt. The next hunt, the other guy's going to film. Or, or switching back and forth. forth. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I really, I really, really could. And, well, I tell you what, if I had sponsors, I'd hook it up to the one duck I want to kill so bad is a cinnamon teal. Yep. I so, so bad want to kill one. Yeah, I have not. I have not even, I've never seen one except in pictures and I'd love to, a cinnamon I've, and, um, I've seen the mount of mount of one, Grant, but Grant saying I'll film. I don't have to shoot. <laughs> I appreciate it. Grant. <laughs> I'll keep, I will keep you in mind. If I ever get some sponsors, buddy, I just want to go every day. I got you, buddy. Yeah. I, if I could, I, I mean, other than uh, 
whether you and I got on the swan hunt or if we went and done just a wood duck hunt or whatever it might meet somewhere and, you know, shoot whatever. I really could. I could hunt from straight north of us all the way up to the or north of me and all the way over to the northeast and the southeast. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, oh, I, I had to turn stuff. I mean, you turn it. I hate turning down a trip. Because you, you know, you know, you and I, and and I hope some guys understand that that you know they they'll invite you to go on a hunt and you might not be able to go because, well, financial reasons number one, yeah. Um, but you know, like, dude, oh man, I would love to go, and I don't care if I shot one duck or or we limited out. Mm -hmm. It's just some people I want to hunt with, you know, yeah. and have a good time. Yeah. Uh, I'm probably halfway between you two. Yeah. Probably, Grant. I think it. I think you Where, are. Where you at, Grant? Um, guessing if he's halfway. He'll put it up here in a minute. Um, but yeah, it was just he's in South Illinois. Okay. Yeah. Really. I mean, he ain't. I think I could be in South Illinois in like 11 hours. No, yeah. not even that. I think it'd be about 15 hours to get to your get to your place. Yeah. For me. Yeah. If I'm able to shoot straight across without catching any snow up in the mountains, I'd be able to. I, I'd. I usually take the southern route, it, it, which is a little bit longer. Yes. But I don't have to get up in those mountains in case of snow. You know. <clears throat> so I I don't know how it's going to play out yet, whether I'm just going to have the pup shipped to me or Gary and I are going to meet somewhere if he's coming here or I'm going to come over to your neck of the woods. But, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, if I come out that way, I'm doing straight southern route. Mississippi, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina. Yep. Um, I mean, Just, I'm, uh, here I don't have to put your about pistol it. in your lap when you go through Atlanta. Oh, it always is. <clears throat> I don't know, man. It's um, with, it's, a, it's always within a arm's reach of me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so is so is mine. Yeah. <laughs> and so is that one and that one. <laughs> yeah, right. There, yeah, or the, right there, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know if you can see the case, but yeah, and I, I got to keep moving. I kind of, I got to, I got to make sure that I cover a lot of that up with my big old head. Well, everybody always asked me, you know, on the lives on uh, the other platform that you always join me on and Birmingham. Why, yep. Why do I always film this position? Because on that other platform, they'll kick me off for everything that's over here, over there. Over there, yeah. <laughs> and at one time, either breathe or it something that could cause you to stop breathing. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I have this one crappy position right here. And that, was, that really, you know, speaking of that, in this live stream we were, we were in a couple nights ago. Mm-hmm. Which was a purely educational deal the whole thing was not seen it was just a part of it mm -hmm. and i mean literally just a part and he told me they, on his appeal he did win it mm -hmm. good um because it was well it was ed educational however you want to do it yeah but i I don't know. I think it's crazy. Oh, I think it's stupid. I have noticed, though, the other platform has um, let up some on the uh, expired Game. expired, yeah. uh, which is great. And now if you go in there and put what your target audience is, it actually has a sports and outdoors and it right. didn't used to it didn't used to have one. I think most of my problem is because I would always put in FYP. Mm -hmm. And 
I'm going to stop doing that. And you, there's a, there's one especially for, um, it says duck hunt FYP. Yep. If so you I'm gonna, real specific on those. Be, I'm going to get very specific. Yeah. Instead of I'm, just doing F, FYP goes to everybody. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to go into, so into our niche. I've done FYP followers. Uh, what's the, uh, the other one? Um, oh, every everybody or everyone hashtag whatever, and every time I put one or those three down, if it's something that should you know, they think shouldn't be up there, then I get flagged for it. If I don't put it on there, I'm safe. Right, so. uh, Randy Nettles. He's from my neck of the woods. Uh, he's saying his son, eight years old, and uh, he's got a few more years, and then he'll be going. They'll be doing some out of town hunts. Awesome, dude. Yeah, I can't wait till my grandson gets old enough to go. Um, that'd, be, that'd be so awesome. As you talk about some man, so I might have to give a camera to somebody. I so I'm just gonna have to do it. <laughs> Here, dude, you just gotta film this from the start to beginning. Hold a camera in this hand and a cell right. phone in this one and get just get stuff. Right, you know, I, you know, we was talking about we had you know film crew and sponsors and stuff. The dream, I, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I I really do feel bad when I have to tell people I I probably will not be able to do it. Just I'm flattered. I, I mean, I'm not I mean, yeah. at all. I don't think I'm top notch duck hunter. I don't think I'm nope. I, I'm Chris, as we stated in the beginning of this live. I'm just plain old Chris. I'm a good old country boy from southwest Arkansas. I try to get along with everybody. And I feel bad. I wished I really could go home with everybody. I really, really yep. did. And I'm flattered beyond be all, all belief that people were like, man, I'd really like to hunt with you. Whether I have to come there or you come here or, like I said, we meet halfway in between, something like that. I'd really just like to hunt with you. Mm -hmm. it really is it's very flat there, listen there are guys out there that i would love to hunt with or not even just hunt with go eat lunch with them mm -hmm. have a lunch go you know even if it means i'm all right i'm driving a day and a half to this guy and we're not hunting but we're gonna have lunch and supper and hang out with them and just you know have a have a, just a good old conversation yeah and have a good time, you know, catch a fish, shoot something, eat some food, have a good time. Get 20, um, 10, 20 minutes worth of footage, edit it all. Good. And I mean, you don't, we don't have to hunt. I mean, anything, but since that's what you and I are pretty much sending around on all of our social media, right. everybody wants to do, which that's great. I have no problem with that. Right. And I've, not, I mean, I guess you could say humble brag, but I've turned down hunts with people in the duck hunting industry that have been there forever that are uh, cut down world champions in Northeast Arkansas just because I don't have time to go. Right. And um, I, I got an invite from Arkansas. And I'm not mentioning anybody's name right now, but I was invited to... Uh, there was one one stipulation. One, there was only one stipulation that I mm -hmm. couldn't bring. Uh, I couldn't film the hunt. Right. I could hunt. I could take some pictures. But that was it. I, but I couldn't film the hunt. And it, I didn't turn it down because of that. It was fine. I just couldn't go. Yeah. And he, I, yeah. of course, he understood that. He because he even told me, said, you know. Uh, hang on one second. Uh, hey, brother, I'm going to eat out of here. These meds have got me woozy. I enjoyed the show, and thanks for it. All right, Lee, you take care. Get filmed. Um, I hope you start. Yeah, hopefully you'll get out where you're at in a couple days. Take care of yourself, dude, and uh, always know that I'm be praying for you. Um, Randy is saying, where are you buying lunch? I'm always down for food. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere there's good Actually, cats. Randy... Actually, Randy, I am I'm I don't have a date set yet, but uh, this will probably be for South Carolina guys just because it's they're local. 
but uh, I have a recipe for ducks, and I want to invite some people over to put them, hang out in the backyard, and cook these ducks on the smoker, and maybe have a, a two, one or two adult libations, and sit around and chat for a while while we eat this food. So I just don't have a date set up, but if I do, I'll give you a holler. And uh, if Lee is still in here and he hadn't left quite yet, he's always invited. Lee is Lee's my good buddy. He's he's always invited. And I got to tell you the story about Lee. Tell me. So tell me. I've known Lee for many years. Now, Lee is he's an old duck hunter, a few years mm -hmm. older than I am. And so I've known of Lee for many years. I mean, forever. And another good friend of mine, Ben, uh, we went down to the lake, put in the swamp, and we had chosen a place fairly close to the landing. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but everybody's going, like you said earlier, people are going way out in there. I'm gonna ease on over here and just see what I just see what's going on. So we run the boat. We get over there, we're setting up decoys, and I see a flashlight bouncing on the hill. And this guy comes out and says, Dad, you got my spot, man. I said, Oh, I'm sorry, dude. Why don't you come hunt with us? He goes, No, 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 I'll, I'll ease on out. I said, No, man. I said, um, is it too deep for you to get over here? And he's he goes, Well, yeah, it's because it got a creek that runs in between us. I said, All right, we'll push the boat out. I went and picked him up, rolled him in, got him back over to where we were the trees we were sitting on. Mm -hmm. We finished up setting up, and uh, at that time, I introduced myself, and he goes, "I'm, I'm Lee Louder," because his name is on the, on the chat room, so I can say it. And I went from Pinewood. He goes, "Yeah." I said, "Man, I know you. I've known you pretty much my entire life. I've known of you." And we rekindled a, I mean, a friendship that's that you know lasted, you know, and. Um, and then it, it never fails. He's he's one of my duck hunting buddies that um, uh, he gets close to the season. Uh, we're starting to make phone calls to each other, right? Right. <laughs> you know, hey, uh, you see anything? And you know, yep. I, you know, I figured him out. I said, all right, I'm on the way. We'll we'll be there Friday or Saturday or whatever. Yeah. But he's just an old duck hunter. Shoots yeah. a beat up old pump. <laughs> you know, yeah. nothing wrong with it. But, uh, oh, goodness. But he is, um, he's in the hospital right now. So if, if nobody's quite figured it out and, uh, but he's doing better. That's good. I was, he was kind of hoping he was going to get out tonight, but I think it's going to be tomorrow or either tomorrow or the next day before he can get out. So. Oh, man, oh, man. You know, uh, if we ever did get our way and had a sponsorship and a camera guy or two, we could travel everywhere and duck hunt. I promise you we would have three or four videos of just blooper reels. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Easy. Oh, yeah. Easy. 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 I could have. If I took my daughter, everyone of them would be her falling in the water again. <laughs> that was hilarious, man. Her trying to get back up. Oh my gosh. She just kept falling over and it was just, it was, <laughs> uh, well, it was like, it was like, now this would have been a blooper reel. It was dangerous. Yeah. I, I came very close to dying. But when I jumped out of the boat last year, thinking I was on a, a eight inch of water flat and I ended up going into a 20 foot river waders and all. You're very lucky. You was able to grab hold inside the boat. I, well, I always do. I always grab a hold of that grab bar. And as I'm, as I'm easing down mm -hmm. and, um, and usually it's because it's muddy and I'll get my fat butt stuck in that mud. Right. But, um, I mean, that would have been stuff like that, you know, uh, falling down, getting stuck in the mud last year. I mean, I went up to my nipples 
in mud. <laughs> um, if it wasn't for my son, I would still be there trying to catch lizards as they ran by me. Oh, man. Um, I did. I was walking out on a flat, just walking. Doo -doo 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 whoop. Um, the day I jumped out of the boat at the camp up in North Carolina, if, if Craig was here, he would he'd he'd almost have a he'd die laughing. But I jumped out of the front of the boat thinking I was on the hill, and it was not it well, it was the hill, but it was, I mean, I went up to my waist. And it took it took a rope and three guys to drag me out of that thing. Golly. Um and I hurt. The worst I've really ever had. I I found a soft spot of all soft spots. Walked it, same place I've hunted a hundred times before in Arkansas. And walking the same area. And I guess I just stepped on a spot I've never stepped on before. And I instantly to the knees was stuck in mud. Mm. It was horrible. My buddy's like, I don't know how we're going to get you out of here. I said, I don't know how we're going to get me out of here either. But <laughs> the hunt's ruined. So <laughs> start thinking. Well, yeah, it took a long time and I was exhausted after I got out. It just took a lot of working back and forth and him pulling me and everything. Yep. Else. And the, the last time I was in Arkansas hunting in the Biomeda. Mm, I love <clears throat> now we, we rode the boats up in there. Um, I got out. I was helping, you know, we were putting out decoys. This was before my camera days. Mm -hmm. And I was putting out decoys, getting everything set up. I had I had walked that whole entire hole. Mm -hmm. Putting out decoys. Walked it. And I shot a mallard down, and the dogs were behind us going after some crippled birds. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to go out there and get this one that's sitting right there, 15 feet in front of me. Right. And hang on one second. Uh, all right, Randy, take care of yourself. And Charles, I'll get to you in just a second. Appreciate you coming in, Randy. Thank you so much. So I start walking. It's 15 feet in front of me. Hey, depending on if I get over this, I might have to be a cameraman. Hey, no problem, Lee. He's still here. Um, I start walking out. I wasn't 10 foot from the tree. Now, again, I have walked all over this place. Mm -hmm. I hit a limb that was not there mm -hmm. that morning. And I went down like a sack of potatoes. The yep. only I was I actually was filming it with my phone. And when I went down, I mean I went I went and I, of course I lost my phone, you know, phone died right. the whole nine yards. Where man, if I had a camera on me on that day, because I came up sputtering, you know, <laughs> it was it was hilarious. It was just hilarious. Uh, but those kind of things, man, if you had a camera on, I mean uh, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, I've had mishaps before. I've tripped over, you know, everybody's hunted a creek or anything like that. The trees that are along the side, their roots grow out toward the water. I've tripped over them and, you know, face planted in the creek before or something like that. But I've never had anything as bad as getting stuck dang near to my knees in the mud. I mean, same. Like a. Yep. It just, it was horrible. And poor, my poor kid, uh, she's got two left feet. She, <laughs> <laughs> I've, never, <laughs> I've never seen anybody stand up, take two steps, and whoosh, do it again. It was, right, it was right there. You had it right there on the whoosh. Whoosh. Hey, you going to be able to whoosh. That was that was good, dude. I mean, I'm gonna tell you. I when I first saw it, I thought y'all were acting. No, I thought it was. A, I thought in, until I talked to you about it, and then I realized it wasn't. Oh no, no. It, it, Anti, what's yeah. going on? Um, let me get this comment from Charles real quick. 
He says, uh, a guy fishing offshore about 30 miles lost his life last week. Went offshore by himself and never seen again. He had a 32-foot Cape Horn. Uh, the boat was found, but not the fisherman. Oh, oh. man. Mm. Um, nope. Charles, if you know who this is, you don't. of course, you don't have to say anything in the chat, but if you actually know this person uh, or know the family, uh, do me a favor and send my condolences and our prayers. Yes, please. So we had two drownings this year in Oklahoma. One at one at Center Lake, and I don't, I can't recall where the other one is. And one guy was walking out there, and he had a pair of breathable insulated waders on. And man, I wrote the book on how to float. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my daughter has an interesting let me, let me tell you something we were hunting together last year and the ducks weren't really flying that hard so you had to be on your toes and it was it was basically a past shoot summer duck hunt mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we got to talking about old days and old hunts and just a bunch of different things and we had so many ducks flying by us we didn't even pull the gun up I mean, it was just like, we just, uh. I had, since this was my daughter's first year of uh, waterfowl hunting, <clears throat> we'd go out and we'd have a great time, whether we were pulling a trigger or not. It, and there was one day, it was negative four degrees that morning here in Northeast Oklahoma. And are we back? Are we, are we back? Uh, what happened? We back? Uh, well, I started buffering. Um, if somebody who can hear me in chat, just tell me if we're back. Make sure I want to make sure we're back. Testing one, two. <clears throat> somebody can just comment that says y'all can hear us. Uh, Ray, Cecilia says we're back. Um, Charles say, I did not, I did not, I did not know. I, I, I did not, but know people who do. Gotcha. Mm. He was fishing out of Oak Island, North Carolina. I think a swell knocked him out of the boat while trolling. Mm. Uh, yeah, my, my, I buffered and I didn't know if we were back or not. For everybody else. So <clears throat> what were you saying again? I'm sorry to interrupt you. Oh. You forgot. Yeah. I'm the same way. Oh, 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 oh. Uh the young man that died um, at Center Lake here, he wasn't even in a boat. He was going out to pick up uh a bird in a place he's hunted before. And it just so happened this one spot he was walking out to, he's never walked out to before. And 20 foot down the water wearing insulated breathable waders. And he become, unfortunately, a, a anchor at that point. Right. I mean, it's not just boats. I mean, like we stated with our mishaps and we've been lucky enough, the good Lord willing that nothing serious has happened to you, me, my kid anything like that yeah i mean carry a stick be safe yep i have a walking stick that i that i carry um when i'm walking anyway um especially in the water mm -hmm. and i kind of probe um i you know i'm always pro you know probing in front of me mm -hmm. um but i'll still end up falling sometimes oh yeah yeah you know but and this is the time of year, you know, we get torrential downpours. And if you hunt a lot of creeks that feed into lakes like I do, and you get a, the whitewater rapids through those creeks, yeah. that terrain's going to change by the time mm -hmm. you 
out there next season or this coming season. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, we were hunting high during the toward the end of the last year. We were hunting a lot of high water. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I even put some videos out of me crashing into the trees. Um, and it was not because I can't drive a boat. It's because the current, you know, you, 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 you slow down to get between them and the current takes you, spins you. Mm -hmm. And uh, next thing you know, you're crashing into the trees. Mm -hmm. Well, Bougie came in here and lay I, down. So. I, can, I heard her pause. Hey, quit doing that. I will that say, there do it. on those fairly windy <laughs> days that uh, boaters can't get out on the lake, uh, where I hunt 20 minutes south of me and I hunt up the little creek or small river, whatever you want to call it, that feeds it. It's great hunting for me. <laughs> I'm going to want yeah. to have it. And the water and the wind's not too bad in that little shallow creek or mostly shallow creek. So it works out great for me. Uh, hang on one second. Yeah, no. um, just keep keep chatting. Or <coughs> does anybody on there have a dream duck hunt they want to go on? Me and Matt mentioned we wanted cinnamon teal or goose. If you're a goose hunter, uh, I got somebody texting me right now, work related, and. I'm oh, trying yeah. to help them and hey man, I'm kind of busy right now, but <laughs> right. Um uh let's we uh Cecilia saying that she's had rain last couple of days. Lordy lordy lordy, look who just walked in the door. But ain't old pontoon Jody catfishing. How you doing, Jody? Listen, if you like catfishing, um Y'all need to go see her, uh, Pontoon Jody. That old gal can catch some fish. Let me tell you, man. She does a lot of live streams, usually late at night uh, while she's catfishing. But uh, that old gal, she can catch some fish. I think she's caught several this year, over 50. I mean, she's, she's hard on them, boy. Uh, she is. She's good. She's good at what she does. Well, she's on YouTube. Okay. Pontoon Jody. Pontoon Jody. I can remember that. Thank you, Anta. I appreciate that, buddy. As always, thank you for everything you do in moderating. Uh, oh, yeah. I've seen her Facebook post. Yep. Um, no one said anything yet, but, um, my, my big three right now is a cinnamon teal and both a black bellied and fervorless tree duck. Those are the, those are the ducks I want. I've, I've got everything. I mean, as far as puddle ducks, I've got everything. I, um, I don't discriminate. I'm not. Allard Pierce by any means, but the, really the only duck I really want to get that I would just I'd attempt to backflip over is a cinnamon teal. Now, fully plumed, I'm assuming. Do, yes, full plume. Full plume. Yeah. I would say northern shoveler, but I checked that one off the list last season. Uh finally got hey, one. Craig. Uh I wouldn't mind getting a Sandhill Crane. I've got one of them. Have you? I've, I've never had. I've, I've shot a few of them. Um, I can honestly say that was the coldest day I'd ever spent in my life. <laughs> really? Now, I, I, oh, yeah. I I, I, I dang near. I I shot two, and I, I got up. I said, throw me, I, I looked at the guide, 
I said, throw me your truck keys. I'm going to the truck. I, I am cold. And I have, th- that was, that was the coldest day I had ever, mm. ever been. Uh, and that was in Texas. That was in Texas. And oh, yeah. it was, it was brutal cold that day. And we were laying on the ground. And, um, yeah. And I, it- I thought, <laughs> And it's not really the temps in Texas. It's kind of like here. We have some rolling hills and stuff, but the wind's down there. When it gets flat, there's nothing to break that wind. Man, it'll cut right. right. Hey, what are you doing? Come here. Come here. Come here. I know you. You'll start eating a cord or something. You stay out from under there. No, uh, she's she's wanting attention. She's like a cat, dude. All of a sudden, she wants attention. And she wants it right then and there, not. Yep. You know, you're like, who in you? Who are you talking to? And why am I not invited? Bougie. Hey, you want to get up here? You want to say hey to everybody? Come on. Come on. Say hey to everybody right here. Right. Sweet baby. Look at there. Say hey everybody. What are you doing, boo? Say hey to everybody. Hey, your eyebrows are going back. Yeah, I gotta get a, we gotta get another haircut. Get a summer cut here in a couple weeks. <laughs> How big is she now? Um I think she's close to 75. Um, she is solid. I mean, she's not tall at all. She is just solid. Right. Um, and I mean, yeah, hashtag bougie matters. That's right. Uh, all right. I'm going to let you down. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't weighed her. Uh, we have we got to get her to the vet. We're gonna uh, Jim and I, Jimbo and I ain't been home. Long tough day. Yeah, you've been working hard, dude. On the Craig's a buddy of mine up in North Carolina. They've been working on a, I believe, at a duck lease or a duck camp somewhere. Oh, that's cool. <sighs> yeah, Craig's a guy I hunt with a lot in North Carolina. Um, Go up there and stay at his place, and we use that as our base camp, and then start going. Right. But uh, yeah, I need to take her to the vet. We've we're gonna get her um, spayed, mm-hmm. and um, we're gonna give them a call here probably at the end of the week. Set up an appointment and take her so she'll be out of commission for a couple weeks i I would assume um and she's been acting funny the last couple weeks she's she's gonna act even more funnier in a after this (laughs) Uh, yeah yeah, we's talking about hunts we'd like to do i've always wanted to do a uh conservation hunt and i had the for snow geese and i had the opportunity uh just a couple months ago to go do one. And man, you talking about bad timing. Could not do yeah. it. I've been wanting um they have them up in North Carolina, but you gotta you gotta put in for a lottery to really? do it. Yeah. And um at least that's my understanding. Uh Craig or Charles, y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, but that's that was my understanding. So um, I, have, I have a question go ahead. for. So it's my understanding, <clears throat> if we if you apply for the swarm permit, and you get it, and then myself and the other uh, two guys join us, I In have the party, to, the party hunt. Yeah, I have to have my 
out of state license before I can apply to get that? Is that that is my understanding. Um, Charles, can you help us out with that? Charles is like a walking encyclopedia of North Carolina DNR. Right. Um, I do believe you have to get, which doesn't make any sense to me because you don't know if you're going to get the draw or not. Right. But I don't know if you have to get the license and get the, the permit and then put in for the permit. I, I'm going to get the license anyway, regardless. I'm getting a license over there because I never know when I'm going to go. Um, so I'll get a year of license, but I don't know how North Carolina, I, I think you have to get the license. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And is what the way I understood it, you have to, but you have to tell them what date you're going to be there well how in the world am i supposed to do that exactly uh, craig is saying he's seen a turkey yesterday with white wings oh wow wow was it a pie ball it'd have to be unless it Uh, okay, so this is from Charles. Yes, he must have. A yes, license. he must have a North Carolina license before applying. Money grab by the NCWRC. So is it true I have to tell them, Charles, what dates I'll be hunting when I apply for my license? And how would he know that? Yeah, exactly. Because a, a, a non-resident North Carolina license ain't cheap. Mm -mm. <clears throat> Never seen one like that before. It was crazy. I bet it was. The only thing, unless he's a pie bowl, or he got, or his mom and daddy got one was a domesticated turkey, and the other was a wild turkey. Oh, man. Now, here's my question, Charles, and I don't know if you can answer this or I may have to call North Carolina, but let's say we're going under a party since I got my, since I got mine last year. Can those guys use my license under the party because we're going to be doing party tags and guys are from out of state. So like I would be like, yeah, we are applying. I got five guys that are applying or four guys or whatever it is. I'm getting the, the license, the year license. Um, Okay, I guess you would have to buy a non-resident season license to cover the entire season. Good question. Not sure on that. All right, Cecilia, so you take care of yourself. Thanks for coming in. So I'm going to ask him that. I'm going to ask him that question once it gets closer, Chris. Okay. <laughs> because I'm going to buy a a year license, and there will be four people. So I will need your information. Right. You know, right. Your information with me. And I would say, okay, we're putting all this under party. Can we, you know, being that I've got the, I'm getting a year license. They I understand they can't hunt under my license, but we're just applying for the tags. And once, if one of us get drawn, then we all get a tag and we will all then buy our life. They will then buy their licenses. We don't know what day, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I'll ask the question. I mean, I'll ask it when it, once it gets closer. We might decide to go on December such and such, and the outfitter's like, sorry, booked up that weekend. Right. Exactly. 
but I know where I, I know the outfitter we're going with. I know where I'm going to be staying. You know, mm-hmm. and like I said, you come down for a couple of days or whatever. You know, we're gonna you you I if it works like it has for the past eight years with this these guys, <coughs> you're gonna tag out on day one. You're gonna tag Wait. out completely on day one, and then we'll go pack up and we'll head somewhere else and duck hunt. If the duck season's in, we're going to go duck hunt. If it's not in, we're going to go fishing. Works for me. It'll be that that simple. And we may even we may even um, work it to where the duck season is in, mm-hmm. and that way, if we're hunting swans. And we get snow geese come in, we'll be able to shoot the snow geese as well. Right. And then, so it'll be a swan and hopefully some snow geese. And if not, we can still go somewhere and go duck hunt. Right. You know, because I, I mean, we'll go somewhere <laughs> to run your, t- run your, run your license out. Heck yeah. You know, because I, I, man, the birds he's got is unbelievable. Well, buddy, I'm going to have to get off of here. All right, hang on one, hang on one second, Chris. Let me put this up here real quick. Uh, maybe you can line up dates with the outfitter with the understanding you may not get a permit until drawn. Oh, I, I, I have no, I, I'm not worried about Josh. Uh, Josh McCowan is the is the outfitter. Um, I was I was welcome back to come back just to film, <laughs> not even worry about hunting, just to come back and film. Um, which I'll probably do anyway, you know, um, but yeah, I gotta, we gotta figure something out, dude. Yeah. We'll, figure, we'll get it. We'll get all squared away. We'll get it all squared away. Believe it or not, we only got a couple months. And I know. Is it I just, know. you're going by really fast. Oh, can't go by. It's going to slow down in July. Yeah, when that heat sits in, it's going to stink. It's supposed to be 90 degrees here Friday. Nope. Forget it. I hate the heat. Um, and all right, RD, you take care of yourself, buddy. It was 80s uh, day, mid-80s. Yeah, it's supposed to be 90 degrees Friday. But this weekend is supposed to be 45 again. So, uh, you know, whatever. Um. Yeah, come July and August is going to draw out. Yep. It is going to draw. I mean, it is going to draw out way big. September is going to fly because I'm doing a blue wing teal hunt down in South Arkansas. And then uh, that Texas dove hunt that I told you about that I was invited on by the outfitter I've got in September. So September is going to fly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to Louisiana and literally when I get back, my wife and I are going to the Outer Banks of North Carolina for a week's vacation. There you go. So, Where did you say you was going to Louisiana? Venice. Oh, that's too that's that's south south. Yeah. That's, I was going right there. Yeah. He's going to be in the Monroe Shreveport area. We'd have to meet up cuz I'd be Oh going. yeah. Louisiana. If I was in, if I was in, Mon- man, if I was in Monroe, you know where I'd go. I know where you'd go. And you'd be happy, happy, happy. I'll be happy, happy, happy. <laughs> I want to meet yep. one boy, and he's he was cool. I'm, of course, I only met him for a couple minutes, but he was cool. Who who was that? Jace. Here we go. 
I'll group. create my own party, and if none of my buddies want to join, I will open it up to anyone who wants in. If drawn, you do not have to hunt together if we can't work that out. Hmm. That sounds cool, because I'm going to create my own. I guess I, I guess I can create my own party. I guess. Well, I'm going to find out. I'm going to find out. It once if we get it because <clears throat> i want man them things are you have i mean my lord um how big they are and how slow they look flying and they're actually cooking with grease bo it's oh. just they're so big when do you get your mount back <sighs> sometime this year um <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, he told me it was going to take about a year. So no, I haven't called him. I'm not going to aggravate him. I've sent him some money. You know, mm. I'm going to wait and just kind of get a progress report on it. And he's got half of it. So, yeah. You know, yes, you can create your own. So, is that when you create your own party? You're going under your license, right? Is that correct? Charles, if you're creating your own party. I could be wrong, but yeah, I think, I mean. I would think so. I would do. <clears throat> Bo, we only got 20 minutes. You can hang out for 20 minutes, can't you? Oh, yeah. Got you. All right. We're going to close it down in about 20. If you Works. can hang out. I'm going to hang out. I know I know you work early and got to get to bed, man. I understand. Ain't no biggie. I've actually been reading. Would you like to hear what I've been reading? Sure. The water power Trek. Yep. Have Bye. you read the um? Have you read the last rice planter? Nope, not yet. I'm saving the best for last. Don't tell me. Okay, I won't. I won't. I'm on a nine, I think. Something island geese. I don't remember. Yeah, James Bay geese. I'm sorry. Okay. That's how far I've got that book. WRC number. Okay, Charles. Yeah, you create your own party. It has something to do with the WRC number. Okay. I'll get it figured out, dude. So don't 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 apply for anything until I get it figured out. And I ain't um, a lot of crap. Tell me. Because I don't know if, if you need to apply or if, if if I do it in all, you know, with everything right. or or what. I'll, but I will call the guy. And I will find out. I, I figure that since you've already had one, it, you'd have better odds. I could. Well, I got mine that. last year, so right. Um, I don't know. All right, Craig, you take care of yourself, buddy. Appreciate you stopping in. Have a good one, Craig. But yeah, man, I want to. That is. That turned me on, dude. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I never old birds. Ooh. Like I told you, I never knew you could do it, and then you did it, and I was like, "Well, wait a minute. There's something else I can go get now." <laughs> All right, okay, exactly. <laughs> but I just exactly. hope. I hope with everything I'm able to go do it. If it happens, that's that's fifty fifty. Right. It's um, it's wicked. I mean, you know, bring your waders because oh, you may yeah. be laying in a ditch. You know, um, standing in a ditch. You know, it's 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 the coolest thing since sliced bread, dude. I, I bet you. Not. You know. Oh, you get. I can tell you now because you will get nervous because you will see this big old bird coming in. And they're just coming and they're coming and they're coming. Like, man, when are they going to get here? 
Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, they're on top of you. And it's like, oh, my, I can't, I, I didn't bring a bazooka, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeff is saying here a party is if, you, if only one of you get drawn, you all can get a license. Yes, Jeff, that, that is correct. Here, too. So if one of us gets drawn... Um, we all get drawn. I just don't know how it works. I gotta, I gotta call the guy to to confirm how it actually works. But uh, yeah, it was uh, it's it's a it's a it's a. I love it, dude. I I mean, it's one of those things. I I wish I could get a, a, without worry get a get a tag every year because mm-hmm. that, that, that just, it is something else, man. Tundra Swan is a CSA of waterfowl. Yes, sir. It's a uh, what? CSA. Confederate state of America. Hey, Bob. <laughs> and uh, anti something. He's telling me, always bring your Zuka. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, they're they are whew. if no one's there, if anybody in here has never hunted Tundra Swan, you really gotta try it once. Um, if you got a good good outfitter in a good and a good area, um, it will hook you. I mean it's I like to turkey hunt, and although I have not been this year, but that first turkey that I shot hooked me into turkey hunting. Um, and you know, a turkey, of course, being bigger than a duck, uh, it is, it is something, dude. I mean, it is that tundra swan. He is so big, so heavy. All neck, you know, you know, uh, unbelievable. You know, I am not a turkey hunter by any means. I I could care less about chasing a turkey. I've done. I enjoy it. I've got. I enjoy. I just like being in the woods during the spring, hearing everything come alive. Um. I just haven't had time to do it. Um, the last, you know, it seems like every time the weekend rolled around, either I was involved with something or I was, is pouring down rain. Right. And, you know, even duck hunting, um, if it's, I don't like to hunt pouring down rain. Uh, yeah. If just, it's pouring rain, th- lightning, no. Nah, yeah. Know. I've done it. But, but usually lightning follows thunder, so we're vice yeah. versa. Are you saying C5A? I'm not exactly sure what he's trying to say here. I don't know. I don't know what he's trying to say. Anyway. You said like you about to go to sleep, Bo. Getting there, man. Getting there. I'll be all right. We only got 12 more minutes. 12 minutes. We're going to call it. No, keep on going. Shoot. We only got four people in here. Uh, that includes me and you. So only two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, uh, bedtime hits because I just, I'm, I shut down. Mm-hmm. But I also take enough sleeping pills on a friggin' horse every night. Right. I take a hundred milligrams, and the doctor's like, "You're not supposed to take more than 10. I was like, I might, "You might as well give me Pez candy." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's, oh, a C five, C five airplane. Okay, I got you. I got you. 
Duh. <laughs> I've seen them in like the zoos or you know parks that right. have them. But I've man, I didn't know you could go after one of those suckers. Oh, when you, I mean, there was one field. Um, anti saying, forgive me, please remind me if Chris has content on his page yet. Uh, uh, I think on his, what, what's on your YouTube page? A couple short clips. Uh, <coughs> I think my daughter falling in the water in the waiters is on there. And just a couple other short things. Nothing special, really. Right. He, you're mostly on TikTok and Instagram. Yeah, I've I've got some stuff I could put on YouTube, but I have to edit it down to make it into a clip. And right. uh, I just uh, haven't had the time or taken the time to do it. Right. Oh, it's, it's a huge undertaking at times, man. Uh, I, I kid you not. Or, and and I, then, I'm sorry, go ahead. And if you're like me, I do a lot. Of, I try to do remotes. Mm-hmm. So I go video something somewhere else just to kind of give it different from either being in the office or being in the shed or the backyard. Right. And, you know, it takes me 20, 30 minutes to get there. And I come back and you come back and you download the video. And then um, you have video clips that are corrupted. Yeah, it can't be used, so you got to go do it again. All right, Charles, appreciate you coming in here tonight. Thank you so much for your advice and helping us out on a few things. Yes, thank you very much. As always, appreciate you, and uh, you take care of yourself, buddy. And th- I mean, in all honesty, this year the waterfowl season being what it was, I just really wasn't able to get a lot of content. Right. I planned on it. I plan on if it was anything like it was season before last, I would have had enough content for until the next upcoming duck season <laughs> to post something. But right. it just wasn't like that. I think between well, I know between me and my daughter, twenty seven ducks this year, and yeah, I smacked that in the mouth the 2023 season. All right. All right. I mean, that wasn't nothing. I had that in a month. Right. But uh, it, just, it is what it is. It's, it's called hunting for a reason. That it is. Um, and like you said, you know, we've been talking about this all night. And, you know, I think it was a good conversation about it. You know, the, the dream, you know, the, it's the dream. You know, I could. I know. I know. I'm pretty sure. I, I'm not going to say I know for a fact, but I am pretty sure that if I had somebody filming some of the crazy things that I do and say, you know, just off the cuff stuff and had four or five good, really good hunts, I, it it would explode. Oh, yeah. I, it, it would just absolutely explode because, you know, guys like to see – you know, most guys enjoy seeing pile picks, you know, lots of birds, lots of stuff yep. going on, yep. you know, lots of action. Mm-hmm. And when you're trying to film by yourself, when you're by yourself filming or doing the, all the filming, you just can't get those action shots. You're right. You know, and- unless you've got, you know, 10 cameras set up at every angle. You know, you just cannot get those those really good action shots. And, and so um, I have this pedestal my phone's on, and it's always on here when I'm on a live, whether it's mine, yours, or who's ever else. And it has a remote, and I have another piece I can attach to this. But then I've got a – if I'm on video, I can – it'll start recording. Or if I'm on picture, it'll start recording. Or take the picture, I mean. But then I got to do that, stick the thing in my pocket so I'm not going to lose it in the middle of the, you know, wood, right. water, and everything. And to be ready for the birds to come in and call at the same time and everything else. And yep. 
I know it's a chore and I don't mind doing it, but like you said, it don't always work out like you want. I took this right. thing out once last year and I knocked the stupid thing over. So I was like, well, I'm not going to do that today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm mad. <laughs> so <laughs> I, and you know, so I don't know if you watch uh, Dr. Duck Dennis on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, you've seen a lot of his videos uh, or his posts like I have. The birds aren't here. We got to go find the birds. And they're public yep. land like you and I are. They, they got, you know, if I had the means and the funds, just like you and every other, I almost slipped up there, every other duck hunter, yeah, we could go find the birds. But, you know, I'll yeah. work a paid job. <laughs> I, I got to yep. work. Yeah. I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't own my business. Yeah. You know, you and know, I work for somebody. He doesn't deserve it. Yeah, I mean, he does deserve it. But I'm just saying, you know, if I had, if we was able to do all that too, we could, well, Chris, the birds ain't in South Carolina. Well, we're going to Louisiana or Arkansas or somewhere, Mississippi, somewhere. Yep. We're going to get on the birds. And uh, it's a big blessing, big, big blessing to have. Well, I'll, I've always said, if I ever win the lottery, you'll never know, but there will be signs. <laughs> and you'll know it. There I will was, be signs. I, I don't care about public land hunting, then. I'll have a thousand acres of my own to go on. <laughs> <laughs> and it will have rice and flooded corn and millet and everything it'll be it'll be done up right i guarantee it and i'm gonna and i'm gonna buy land right next to the coca-cola woods and i'm gonna call it the pepsi woods and uh oh man <laughs> mine would be the, the mine would be the diet mountain dew the mountain dew zero woods <laughs> mountain dew zero woods uh, where y'all going today the mountain dew hole <laughs> mountain dew hole we listen we actually had um we had a hole that we called um, the Domino Hole, and huh. from Domino's Pizza. How it got in a tree, I do not know, but it was a Domino's Pizza box stuck in a tree. Really? And we came, we came into this place. I mean, we we were. I knew it was back there, but I never knew how to get into it. Mm -hmm. And we fought our way and fought our way and fought our way. And I mean, actually getting out of the boat, pulling the boat mm -hmm. until we found the route. And when we got in there, there was a pizza box. And uh, no, I'm sorry. Not, I apologize. A Dorito bag. And we call it the Dorito hole. Mm -hmm. And man, that was one of the best holes I have ever had. And it, if you didn't know the, the correct way to hit, you actually had to hit a tree and glance off just perfect. And it just opened up in, yep. into a run. But you would never see it unless you hit that tree and, and bounce just a little bit. And um, it broke out into a really nice flat, a lot of little different potholes. Um, mm -hmm. the, first, the first year we hunted it, we shot limits out of it pretty pretty consistently, but I took some friends of mine, it was five of us, and uh, we went in there and shot a five-man limit of teal and wood ducks, blue wing, green wing, and wood ducks. Uh, we had other ducks flying, but they just didn't want to didn't want to commit. But uh, that's two of the best eating birds right there, in my opinion, green wing teal. Yeah. Well, buddy, I know you're about to fall asleep. I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> yeah, um, not helping. I'm trying to do the, the no, no soda pop during the day. So, yeah. Not let's see. Wait a minute. I got to post this real quick. Go ahead. Uh, Daddy, I don't know. Bougie's <laughs> some kind of collar awesome. and the food delivery by float plane. I don't know. <laughs> Who said that? Anti at J. Anti, yeah. Oh, that's funny. He's a good guy. He's a little weird, but he's a good guy. 
Oh, uh, he's a great guy, actually. But uh, guys, listen, I want to, Chris, I want to thank you for coming on tonight, just hey. chatting and having a good time. Thank you for having uh, me. Those of you who are left in the chat. <laughs> all one of you, oh, which is Jeff, looks like, maybe anti. Uh, I appreciate y'all coming in. Um, I really do, guys. You know that. I say it every every, every live stream. I appreciate y'all. Y'all are the reason why I do these things. So we can just chat and have a good time and, and, and goof okay. off and get away from our daily or weekly conundrums. So anyway, thank you very much. Chris, thanks. again, thanks for coming in. Guys, thanks. go check out Chris. TikTok, Instagram. He does have a, a little bit on YouTube. Uh, show the love. River, what's going on? I say, Matt, appreciate you coming in, man. Appreciate you coming. But uh, we're going to be out of here. Our two hours is up. Y'all have a good one. Appreciate you. Let's go to bed. And right. we will see y'all next time on Later. Daddy Duck 365. Thanks. Good night, y'all.